In this module we learn how to start by, we learn how to edit files, we learn how to save files and we learn how to quit. There's more to that than you might expect. Let's have a look. Like most text editors, well and word processors as well, Vi can be started in one of two ways. You can either open Vi with a particular document or you can open Vi just, if you like, as an empty canvas without reference to any particular document, just, if you like, in new document mode. And this is how you do it. If you want to use Vi to edit a file, then you simply provide the file name on the command line, on the shell command line, after you type in the, the words VI. I'll give you an example of that. If you want to edit a file called script1, you just type in vi space script1. Or if you want to edit multiple files, you can type in vi and then the multiple file names. You could, for example, specify vi space script1 space script2 space script3, or you could just use a wildcard character like asterisk, as you can see in front of you. If you want to start vi without any reference to any file, you can do that too, and you just type in vi and press enter. Let's have a look at those various examples. If I want to start vi with a file name, I can do that. I can say vi another.txt, and there we are. It opens up, and I can make any necessary modifications that I wish to make to it. I won't show you those modifications now. I'll show you them in the next module. i now show you another way of starting vi. I can start Vi with, um, say, an asterisk, like star.html, like, like so. And once I'm in Vi and I'm theoretically editing multiple files, I can use the command, you'll see this later in this module, colon n, see the little in the bottom left-hand corner, colon n to move on to the next file, and then on to the next file, and then on to the next file, and so on. Finally, if I want to just start Vi by itself, I can just type in Vi, press enter. Now, the text that you can see there is just a little introductory screen, if you like. It's a little splash screen. It's not actually the text that you have sitting in your memory. We learned from this that the version of Vi that I'm using is VIM, or VIM, which is an improved version of Vi. But don't worry, I won't be showing you any of the improved features Every feature I show you will be relevant to all versions of Vi. One of the things you'll notice about this particular version of Vi is that often the files that you open up are color-coded. You might have noticed that from one of the HTML files I opened up a moment ago. And that's unlikely to be the case with the Vi that you're using. Everything will just be in plain black and white text. Notice also a bunch of little tildes or squiggles down the left-hand column. Each one of those indicates that there are no lines there, no lines of text. So in fact there's only one line of text, it's a blank line, it's the very first line in the file, and the second line that you can see on the screen has got a blue squiggle on the front of it, as do the rest of them, which indicates that this is not actually a line at all. Now if I make some changes at this point, I'll just type in the word hello for example, hello, press escape, back into command mode, before I can quit out of Vi, it won't ask me to save my changes. I just need to know that the changes need to be saved. But there is a little bit of smartness going on with Vi. It won't let you quit out of Vi unless you save your changes, or explicitly say that you don't want to save your changes. Now, if you start Vi in empty canvas mode, as I've just done, in other words, by not specifying a file on the command line, then I must nominate the file that I'm willing to save the uh, text that I've typed into before I can exit. And I'll show you that very soon.